Good morning, brethren. Good morning. Good morning. I have entitled my sermon this morning, Being Careful of What We Say. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Years ago, I remember, one would use this saying as a sort of counteraction in response to something negative being said to them or about them by someone. But brethren, as we know from experience, that this scene is not altogether true. For even though sometimes a negative comment made by someone may not cause any physical harm and can be overlooked or ignored, there are those that can be very destructive and devastating both to us and to others. And the scripture has a lot to say concerning words and the tremendous effect it has. Such as in the book of Proverbs, like this one, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Now, there are varying beliefs concerning what this verse is saying. But, the, but we, brethren, have been admonished not to lean to our own understanding, but to let scriptures interpret scriptures. And for this particular statement, there is even a reference in the New King James Bible, referring to Matthew 12, 37. But I will read from verses 36. But I say unto you, that for every idle word men speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So, brethren, this is the seriousness of how our words can affect us, and what Proverbs 18.21 is revealing to us about life and death being in the power of the tongue. And we also have many examples of such as what happened to Sarah for speaking against Moses as well as Ananias and his wife who experienced the reality of Proverbs 18.21 when they yielded to the devil and used the power of their tongue to lie, also showing us how concerned we should be about always speaking the truth. So, gossip, slander, etc. is something we need to avoid. For they foster lies and can cause a person to transgress the nine commandments. For what if what is being said about someone is not true? but was just an assumption or an insinuation, does that not amount 
to parent false witness against the individual? So brethren, let's be careful not to be involved in spreading rumors. But heed the scripture that says, slander no one. Which does not mean speaking the truth about the wrong things being done by someone. Or else, Paul could be accused of slander. Or even John, when he wrote about the evil deeds of someone named, I don't know if I could pronounce this, but that old Rephes in Tudron. But according to the concordance, the Greek word for slander is diabolos, <coughs> meaning devilish. Malicious, wicked person, false accusers. And the Hebrew, Daida, means bad or evil report, depraiming, which is simply attempting to cause harm to someone by trying to make them look bad in the eyes of others, which is in total opposition to love, which does no harm to its neighbor. And so, brethren, concerning these things, I want to suggest three of the ways that can help in this regard. to how we can use our tongue. Point one, given heed to the scriptures concerning what we say as to avoiding idle or careless words from proceeding from our lips, which includes slander, gossip, lying, cursing, as scripture instructs us to use our members as instruments of righteousness and not unrighteousness. But point two, we must continually strive to think about what we are saying or about to say. Will it cause harm to others? Proverbs 10 to the 2 says, The lips of the righteous knows what is acceptable. And in Colossians, we see how that can be done. Colossians 4 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt including when one is upset by the inclusion of the word always showing that even though the tongue is described as being unruly untamable, we are still held accountable for what for how we use it so being angry does not give us permission to, as they say, give someone a good tongue lashing. And point three is we need to keep reminding ourselves of the serious implications of what we say and how it can affect our lives and the lives of others and pray as it says in Psalm 141 that a God be placed over our mouth 
and a watch over the doors of our lips. And especially as we see how corrupted communication has become in this world as to what is now the normal and acceptable vocabulary of the day, where foul language, profanity, etc., is now a second language to many, so that we need to even be avoiding the slangs and the songs that are in total opposition to righteous living. As scripture says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Which is a guaranteed way for right words to come out of our mouth. For our Savior reveals that what proceeds from the lips reflects what's in the heart. Therefore, brethren, let's be obedient to our Creator so that we can grow in the righteous character He desires for us. So that we strive to maintain the attitude and the desire expressed in Psalm 19 that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart may be acceptable in his sight.